so it hasn't been update for quite some time because these days everything was going just very slowly uh, generally just waiting for the parts you know uh, with this COVID bollocks is everyone is taking as excuse just everything is late all the parts and passwords and suppliers is unbelievable uh, I'm still waiting for the flanges for the Econo line to the exhaust manifolds you know all I've done is the mesh collector prototype in aluminium I don't know if you've seen in a previous video probably not there you go, I still want to go into the debunt. Um But you know, I'm still waiting for the flanges for the exhaust. I can't really plan anything, I just have to wait. Um, and obviously I was trying to get the Volkswagen T2, the 1.9 conversion done as soon as possible. And uh, on this one, you've seen from the previous video, I blame the scavenge pump. It wasn't the scavenge pump. The scavenge pump was working absolutely fine. There was actually a guy on, uh, I can't remember who, actually on the YouTube video, he pointed out, so look, I think they, it's you wrong. I think they, they work the way they should. Uh, and he sent me a link to these pumps, the way they work, and he was right. And yes, so I kind of own these guys who put these pumps together, um, apology, because I misjudged them and probably diagnosed the problem too quickly. Uh, it seems very obvious, but it wasn't, so that's another lesson learned we never we never finished to learn actually so that's a good one uh, however then uh, once I understood the way this pump works I found the issue because the previous scavenge pump I used to use they used to generate um, a suction so no matter how small the return line you put on the turbo they will just absolutely just suck out all the oil it was there now in this case this pump doesn't generate any suction so what it does you have to still supply the oil by the gravity to the pump anything that's in the pump it will suck it up if it's not there then it's just not working good enough however once the oil is in, in the pump and is in the line and everything they remove quite a lot of oil actually i've done it before and i want to see i want to show you um so let me show you what I did. Let me just put the lights on because it's quite dark inside there. One and two. Nice and bright. Oh, another thing. Now, we took that as an excuse to change the turbo because the turbo we choose doesn't actually seem to be the right choice for the, for the use he's going to use for it. Now, we kind of say we don't need 300 brakes. We prefer having something that is very responsive for the drivability, for the pleasure to drive this thing. And um, when I spoke with the guy who actually is going to map this car, uh, this engine for me, he seems to be, well, quite very knowledgeable because he asked me all this stuff that I was like, okay, you know what, what, you, what you're doing. So, so far I'm kind of happy with this guy. Let's see what happens, but I'm quite confident he knows what he does. And the, the beauty of it, thing is that, the beauty is that he said, I got experience with these turbos, with the BMW turbos, with first is the second gen, and they're not very responsive. Yeah, they produce some power, but they're not very responsive, so they're not gonna give you the power band you're after. He said, I recommend this turbo. It only gets you 250 brakes, but 250 day brakes, like no stress all day long, not even pushing, so very reliable. But he said, pretty much no lag. So they spool as quick as the original small turbos, which is, Kind of what we want. It's still a camper van, it's not a race van or race car. So that will give you the nice pleasure to drive. You know, you don't have to reduce the gear or anything, just put your foot down and off you go. So I've ordered a turbo, it's a Volvo turbo. It's a 20, uh, it's a GTB 2056 VL, variable geometry, and we actually leave it, actually put it on. Let, step back. To put that turbo on, because obviously different flange, different position, I had to redesign the exhaust manifold. Not completely, let me show you. Only this section here, from here to there, because uh, the b my turbo, the flange was here, this one obviously is on a different position, so not the whole exhaust manifold, just this bit. Plus, 
We fitted the sensors. One is for the back pressure sensor, one is for EGT, which the mapper asked me to, to put it on, which again convinced me to do it with him because he knows what, it, what he does. Because that's how you map the diesel engines uh, on the back pressure and on the EGT, plus on the AFR. But that's the bank we have to put on, which is here. But this is going to be after the turbo in the downpipe, which I still have to make. However, this is the new turbo. Uh, the exhaust house just looks slightly bigger than the Beamer one, but it's fairly big anyway. And yes, we left the electronic actuator on this turbo for the variable vane. We haven't done a convention for the um, vacuum operator one because this guy, he reckons he can plug this into the standard ECU and he can manage that, which it will be great because obviously with the electronic actuator, you have much better uh, control of the variable geometry, which again, gives you better spool, gives you better control of the bull, so all positive. Um, so yes, it's uh, yeah, it's actually sitting in a, in a better position because the older turbo disc was facing straight to the, soup, to the chassis. And uh, yes, there was a space for the 90 degrees straight up, but I mean, this is just slightly better. The downpipe will have to be more tricky because you will have to go around from there to well, somewhere here. I have to rebuild it anyway, so no problems. And obviously now as we learn how this pump works, I obviously put this way bigger return line. This is probably oversized. <laughs> it's um, 19 millimeters inside. So nearly 20 millimeters inside here. So that's good enough. I mean, this is way bigger than you need, uh, bigger than the standard, so we shouldn't have any problems with that anymore. And yes, I blame the pump wrongly. It was actually my fault not to learn how they work, that these don't generate the, the, the suction as I, I thought they do. So now we learn and we, we, we obviously we corrected everything. But so yes, it was kind of my fault. Uh, not having enough knowledge, not informing myself good enough. So there you go. But again, uh, I think everything turns into even better result because in the process of finding the issue and finding that I was wrong with the oil return line, we find out that the turbo also is not suitable for what obviously Nick wants. So we took it as an excuse and you know did a step forward and uh, we're pretty sure now he's gonna be spot on exactly what we want. Now, let me show you because I got a liter of engine oil. I'm going to stick this into this big return line, which is, yes, it's very straight. I know it's not on the angle, but it's very straight to the pump. And then I'm going to fire just the pump up and we're going to see how long it's going to take this pump to drain a liter of engine oil. So I think that's a good experiment. Let me set the camera up so you can see everything and we do it. Right, so hopefully you can see me good enough from that angle. Let me just stick this in nicely because I'm sure it's going to leak some oil. I don't want too much engine oil <laughs> everywhere. I had enough of that from the turbo leak you seen on a previous video. All right, so mm, it's a bit tight here because I want to make sure you see everything. Um, all right. So the pipe is not full yet, nearly full. There you go. I will have to twist this obviously because I don't want any air bubbles. So bear with me. I'm hoping you can see the level. I can see it clearly. Let me just, might be tricky as tight here. I have to put my hands in there and uh, get the relay to the positive. Should I trigger the pump up? Ah, well done. Can't find it. Oh, there you go. All right, ready? So three. This is one liter of oil. Yeah? Right. Pretty much empty. Already. What did that, that take? A few seconds. Actually, I didn't. <laughs> I wasn't twisting this quick enough to put all the all the oil inside there. So yeah, I'm pretty sure the pump works. So again, for the Chinese guys who assembled this pump, I'm very sorry. Uh, Miss Judge it is actually very good. He's actually doing a very good job. 
and uh, so there you go there's a bit more oil left there let me put it in it is very noisy I have to say but it works just great we make sure all the oil is drained <laughs> Honestly, it's very quick, very quick. So, I think that was good enough. I think we can accept this pump as actually pretty good, cheap but pretty good. Noisy as a downside, but to be honest, it's in the back of the car behind the engine. Once everything is running, you can barely hear the thing. I mean, you can hear something, but you know behind all the background noises it yeah, kind of disappears so there you go and uh, so I think it's good value for the money then so yeah my apologies again for misjudging the pump but it's good now I wish I could assemble everything now and test it and try it but I'm still waiting for the gaskets for the turbo which I've ordered it it was two weeks ago and still nothing and they obviously can't complain, you can't say nothing because everyone now says, oh, do the COVID bollocks, blah, blah. You may expect some delays, so we don't know when the stuff will arrive. And sometimes you got the stuff straight through your door after two days, so it's a gamble these days. There's nothing I can do. We'll see. All right, so we know the pump works. The turbo is the right one. Uh, I just have to assemble back together once I got the gaskets back in. But now I'm gonna build a downpipe uh, because obviously not having the gaskets won't stop me to have the turbo in a position and look up all the downpipe and bring it back into the standard exhaust exhaust system we had. So yeah, happy days so far. This is the progress with the fuck with that. I don't know, ghosts. So yeah, this is the progress. Everything looks good. I'm actually happy with that new turbo. I'm happy with the turbo itself. I'm happy with the new position. Although it's, it's actually um, higher in the position because obviously I was trying to get this turbo as high as possible because it's, we're still using the gravity to get the oil down to the pump, which now I think is spot on. But that causes the turbo and the exhaust money for the, the, the final bit and the ex exhaust um, housing being very close to the charge cooler or the plenum which is charge cooler integrated so i need uh, um, a heat jacket on that turbo uh, the exhaust has been wrapped this is i think these are actually four layers of um, heat wrap this stuff here so i'm pretty confident this is not going to transmit too much heat in there plus this is water cooled so it's not going to be a big issue but you know bit of extra doesn't doesn't really hurt all right on with the downpipe all right so here we go again everything honestly going sideways these days it's been a week everything just going nuts uh the van head gasket blow up as i said uh, i ordered a new one the victor Heinz one with the new head bolts and everything and it arrived in time like they say on monday but if I can arrive to something strange, like three cylinder sub engine or something like this. I said, what, what, is, what is this? He said, well, this is what it comes, comes, comes up like. It's like, I mean, are you sick in your brain? A three liter six cylinder engine, you bring me three liter, uh, three cylinder head gasket? What should I do with this? Oh, I'm sorry, this is what you get, this is all you can get. Oh, honestly, it's, it's a piss taking. Now, another thing. I've done my missus fuel pump on the Pajero, on the Shogun 3.2. Recondition the pump, put all the bearings, all the seals. Uh, this bearing had just arrived, so I said, okay, I can assemble the pump. I got all the seals, all the kit, no problems. I've done the internal bearings, these ones, I made them myself. I with a friend of mine, I put them in, and the pump is spot on. It's just great, right? And there is a special seal, which is this one, was broken. Inside the pump, it was like, okay, this is the obvious problem. I got a new one with the whole like, comprehensive kit. And I put it on. And I was trying to put this shaft on the first time, the second time, just make sure everything is spot on, everything goes in place as it should be you now. All the 
everything as just spot on, not taking any chances. All right, fine, no problems. And the first time I'm gonna put the shaft on, it was like, mm, all right, just put a bit more tap like by hand. And I pinched it. And I pinched the bloody cell. The brand new bloody cell. Ah, honestly, it's, it's doing my heading these days. It's, um, I wanted so much to finish this pump and assemble it to give my missus a present for her, uh, obviously for the, well, the Christmas present. And, uh, you know, I, you know, one of these times when it's just like everything just goes sideways, every possible thing. So, there you go. <laughs> but, without note, uh, the camper van is finished. I've done it. Uh, it doesn't go bad, obviously. We can't drive it because, uh, what is there? We can't drive because the VGT is not connected, it's electronically controlled. And we haven't done uh, vacuum operated um, conversion because the guy who's supposed to map it says he can connect that to ECU. So it would be much better because you can control that electronically step by step, not just on off. So that would be much better. But obviously, we can't even test, we can even drive it. However, <laughs> there's an old trick to control VGT or VNT turbos. Not all of them, though. Some of the systems you can control just mechanically by a small spring. I don't think this is the case. However, I put one on, so I close the VGT, so now it should spool as a small turbo. Maybe opens, I don't think so, because it's a different system, I think. Uh, but, won't make you to hit it. But so now the turbo spools. Let me, let me hit you, let me show you the difference in modes. This is VGT closed. Let me just put my hand in there. thing is I'm gonna test it now just just out of curiosity if it goes uh, it's even pissing down Jesus Christ nothing is going good to see. obviously inside is very noisy because we don't have the cover let me just put the light on you see that there's no cover on the top of the engine so it's obviously very noisy however here it is <laughs> Have you ever heard that turbo chat that just by revving it? It's like, I don't know, this is 1500 RPS, 2000, or even now. Maybe 2000. <laughs> you know what, let's take a first spin. Let's take a first spin. Let's see what happens. I'm sorry for the crappy video, but I can't be bothered to make any more say anything. Just, you know, fuck it. It is what it is. Stop with the camera there. Hope you can see something. Oh. All right, lights on, lights are on. No power steering, we don't need one.
know what? I'm gonna. Uh, come with me. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna lose that um, spring a little bit. I'm gonna lose that spring a little. Uh, put it my nice And uh, I'll show you how I've done it. I have to put a breather on the pipe, pipe from the breather here to this atmospheric by having to make it yet. Making some boost now. Nice. It's gonna surge less, I wanna close the vent a little bit less, this is too much. Give me a second. Alright, let's see how it goes now. I still think it's gonna surge massively, but oh, at least the heaters work. We got a nice clean windscreen, nice clean windscreen. Can't even talk properly these days, I don't know. It is what it is. All right, so <laughs> everything is wet. Right. Let's put the camera here again and see what we can get out of it. <laughs> Too bad. But let's try it anyway. Let's go around the business park, see what it says. nothing is connected we go let uh, me put some light on it <sighs> it's dark now so uh, let me put this here this video is going to be rough as mm. obviously we have no map we have plus 120 percent injectors or plus 100 can't even remember now i think plus 100 percent so much bigger uh we have the standard cam so the fuel vaporization is not as great as, as, it, as it could be with a better cam because you put more pressure on the uh, pump injectors with the cam over this is you know not the usual diesel uh, PD ones they, they work slightly different uh, turbo is controlled by nothing it's a spray just cleaning it close uh, and you can see it surges too much it's just generating too much pressure too much boost it should open pretty much immediately but I'm very happy that the thing is this is going to be sorry fully controlled uh, electronically and uh, you can see that the, the car has a potential the engine has very big potential I'm not revving it high because obviously again no control over the turbo uh, I don't want to do something nasty map sense is going on the scale because obviously with the surge uh, the air bounce is falling back from the turbo so you know it's, it's just not good but you can see especially the third there was a wheel spin over there and it was like just no effort okay sure it's raining i know but again bear in mind this is all of the scales nothing has been you know mapped or anything uh, and it's actually control over anything so i like it i like it it's, it's, it's very nice 
clash is still a bit hard, I would say. Uh, I would prefer to be made slightly softer. Uh, maybe after Mafia I get Nick to go back to the workshop and I'm gonna change the ratio a little bit. Uh, because it's quite short, I can make it slightly longer and be even more comfortable. Uh, that's for sure. Oh, it's a bad smell, because obviously that um, exhaust heat wrap is burning slowly and it obviously generates fumes, which they smell bad. Uh, apart that, I'm happy with everything. Oh, it's just noisy. Uh, everything is good, the cooling is just spot on, um, oil pressure and everything is good. What else? Nothing else, at least this one, it came out very good. I had to do more work than I, than I thought. All the exhaust system had to be changed with a new turbo position. I thought I was going to adapt it, but instead I had to just, you know, make it all from scratch nearly. And yeah, this took me probably twice longer than I was predicted. 